Thanks for listening to the Third Take podcast. This podcast is brought to you by Islington Radio and hosted by Laura McMahon. Today's guest is Jinia Cheng, who is a documentarian and a stand-up comedian. We're going to start by discussing the film Memento. Memento, I would say, changed my life Mm -hmm. in a way that... So I grew up in Thailand. Yeah. Um, When we were growing up, obviously, films would be like, it would come out in the cinema, Mm -hmm. then maybe like... Uh, or you could get it in Blockbuster a few mm-hmm. months later. Yep. Um, and that was it. Yeah. So those were the only films yep. I'd like ever seen. Yeah. Cinema to home release. Yeah. Outside of that, you didn't have internet. Yeah. Like I wouldn't have independently gone and like looked mm-hmm. up independent cinema. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And then um, I at school I did something called the International Baccalaureate, um, mm-hmm. which is like equivalent to A levels. But there is one module that is called Theory of Knowledge, okay. which is kind of like kids philosophy. Yeah, that helps you like expand your mind and think differently. And they showed us Memento, the yeah. film. And my mind was just blown <laughs> because I had just never, I just never knew yeah. that you could do something like that. I just yeah, didn't know yeah. that that kind of filmmaking existed. Or, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I'd read books, yeah. you know, that were a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, books, like I only got books from my school library. Like yeah. mm-hmm. I wasn't going to have experienced yeah. much difference in yeah. the yeah. media I consumed. So, and what he says, what Nolan says about that, um, film Christopher Nolan because it's him and his brother that made yes, it. Yes, yeah. So uh, they came up with the idea where they yeah. were on a road trip or something, and um, and they the way that they came up with their final order of the plot. Oh my god, I'm so glad to burn this fact because I say it all the time, and now I can just be like, stop telling people this. They wrote every plot. You'll point. Pass it on to me. I'll tell everyone <laughs> yeah. now. They wrote every plot point on the back of a deck of cards, yeah. like every scene. Then they threw that down the stairs, and then they picked them up, and that was the order. Oh my god, I'm actually film, getting chills. Right, and so um, and so the other thing that's really oh interesting was. I mean, I'm sure they had the first scene and last scene, whatever, set as however it was. Um, but a lot of people don't know this, but there's a third Nolan brother. Oh, Do you know about this? No. Okay. So his name is Matthew Nolan, and he <laughs> was arrested uh, in, I don't know what year, but it was under suspicion of him being a hitman, right? And... There was an b- investigation, whatever, whatever. Eventually, the, it was in Costa Rica. They said this. it was Matthew Nolan. He did this. Oh he was God. under an alias. His alias name was like something Oppenheimer, something else. But this was like <sighs> early 2000s. So I'm there's, getting like so, so yeah, many so chills. There's, there's no way it was like, there's no way it pre, it, there's no way he knew Nolan was working on Oppenheimer and was no. like, I'm doing this fake name. But he got exonerated from this to say he wasn't, in fact, the hitman named whatever Oppenheimer. Also, Oppenheimer is a creepy name to come up with mm-hmm. as a hit name mm-hmm. alias. So they eventually exonerated him. He was, however, later sentenced to 14 months in prison in 2010 for trying to break out of the Metropolitan Correctional Center where he was being held while a U.S. judge reviewed the alleged murder charges. Okay. So wait. He, so he didn't get charged for the murder in right. Costa Rica. They okay. said there's not enough evidence. Yeah. We're letting you go. But during the time he was being held... During that investigation, yeah. he broke out. He prison broke. Why? And he had, I don't know. <laughs> I guess, well, I guess because he was innocent. That's why. I don't know. <laughs> it was a Shawshank situation, yeah. probably. But he was found with a razor, a harness, a metal clip, and 31 feet of rope made from bed sheets. What? How cool is that? I mean, not cool. But so anyway. he could have gone free, but he gave himself an extra 10 years. 14 months. Yeah. Oh, okay, he gave okay, it a, fine. because he tried to break it. Like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But wild, right? Yeah. And then, and then the other two brothers, the two that are in film, Chris yeah. Nolan and Jonathan Nolan, have never con- commented on the incident. Well, I mean, as you wouldn't, what yeah. would you say? But like, interesting that it's about a hitman, and they were yeah. like came up with this idea on a drive, and then the brother was accused of being a hitman. And I'm so cynical. I'm like, does. Matthew Nolan even exist? Is it all just like a PR? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, probably. Oh, that's a PR brain. <laughs> yeah. What if we make up a fake brother yeah. and we put him in jail? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like bed sheets, razor blades, the whole shebang. Like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. And then so, but yeah, because I guess the narrative is so different. And he also says, Chris Nolan said on that, 
that he felt like at that time it was such a TV age and there was people weren't making plots complicated mm-hmm. in case people went up to like got up during mm. the TV show mm. you know and and went to go pick up a pizza or yeah. whatever and so he was like we need to make Fuck something everything. that's like sit down yeah. stay with me figure it yeah. out yeah yeah so great that no that's literally it like it was the plot one mm. never seen anything like it even yeah. the camera Mm-hmm. work at what you call it cinematography yeah yep. um <laughs> you know it wasn't to, like made to be beautiful mm-hmm. even the like carrie ann moss's character like it wasn't written to be a woman in any kind of way like yep. i don't know just all those things that like from only watching hollywood films yeah to that just tearing apart every single thing you've ever mm. everything that you're seeing was put was there choice. for yeah, yeah was a choice mm-hmm. but that watching yeah. that movie yeah. there's one reveal i don't know if you remember when he takes the thing off his leg to reveal the tattoo under his leg mm-hmm. i had never physically watching something like had a physical reaction as much right. as i had at yeah. that moment and after that i was like holy shit <laughs> like cinema has the power yeah to make you think that you're there yeah Yeah. and but it's also what you're saying about working stuff out for yourself Mm -hmm. it's like it's not assuming you're dumb yeah and feeding you everything and allowing you to use your but but funnily now that i'm saying that out loud i'm like that's how they get people into conspiracy theories (laughs) no but it is they by being like i'll figure it out yes they put the trail of stuff so Mm -hmm. that you feel like you figured it out yourself and that's how you start believing yeah yeah Yeah. you're like oh what about this what about this what about this you put it together yeah (laughs) exactly yeah (laughs) but then that's anything isn't it that's like if you're in a conversation with someone and then you're like "Mm, i don't like the way they looked at me and now i have this and now it's just like what are you doing (laughs) it's like a type of brain Mm -hmm. that's like i'll get to the bottom of this and it's like what are you doing (laughs) um you know the okay you know the guy that plays the um sammy something he's got memory problems that actor after he had an operation had amnesia like for a little bit of time oh my god so weird yeah because he did an ama on reddit Ask me anything on Reddit years okay. ago. Yeah, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> an AMA. I was ask, like, is that like an award? Or yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, ask me anything thread on Reddit where mm-hmm. people uh, can be like, hi, I'm you know Christopher Nolan. Ask me anything. Yeah. And famous people, it's usually around some promotion they're doing or whatever. Yeah. But sometimes it's like, I'm a doctor. Ask me anything. But yeah. he did one and um, he gave his email address yep. and he was like if anybody wants to chat like email me so i emailed him what? yeah and he emailed back but it was very much just like i was just asking him about the film and yep. like um he does some other character mm-hmm. acting and yeah we just chatted about fucking yeah that's so cool yeah it was only like three emails but i was like this is so cool i'm like a kid <laughs> emailing yeah like he's like your pen pal yeah pen that's pal. so cool yeah it was <laughs> yeah but oh my god Throwing at the plot points yep. off the bat. I mean, sometimes I feel like doing that yeah. when I'm and writing then just being a like, script. This happens, then this happens, then <laughs> this happens. That's crazy. And actually, yeah. on the on the DVD release of it, they had a thing where if you could pass a memory game or whatever, mm-hmm. then you could have, then you could watch the whole film in chronological order. Which isn't that rewarding, no. but like as a special feature on a DVD. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, wild, right? Yeah, but like, for that to come up. From conception yeah. to what the final thing mm-hmm. is. Yeah. You can only, it's only now that I'm starting to even dip my toe into this world mm. that I'm like, oh my God, the I, the brain. Yeah. Yeah. And creativity. And also the, the thing about that film is also like, I think, you know, sometimes you watch films and it's just like obviously done by a creative person. Yeah. Like, let's say Wes Anderson, mm-hmm. who I also equally love. Yeah. But the, and I'm sure it's a different kind of technical ability with what Wes Anderson right. does. Just, just say the thing. If it's wrong, I'll <laughs> no. tell you it's wrong. <laughs> but just It's like, different <laughs> when Wes does it. Yeah. Like, it's like you think I'm going to yell at you in a no. minute for being oh wrong, God. and I'm not going to. I might, but like it'll be funny if I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe you're a secret diehard Wes Anderson fan. <laughs> don't talk about him. <laughs> but so that's a, yeah, he's a little bit Marmite for some people. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, but with Memento, like just the technical stuff that would have gone 
gone yeah. into making that fucking work. Yeah, yeah. But and I then in the and, and also hand. the idea that it's not it's a, you know the idea that then it becomes a question to like well how much do you want to believe and how much yes. do you want to remember and yes. how much do you this it's yeah. just like what oh no to, yeah, yeah I thought you were gonna give us a bad guy yeah. that was like once you kill him you yeah. kill this but when yeah. when it's presenting an idea back yeah. to you it's kind of like Shutter Island yes. in that sense or, or what's the there's a line from Batman it, oh that's Christopher Nolan as well yes. where he says like the Joker says I'm not gonna do the Joker's voice I might where he's like yeah, Batman's voice he says either die a hero yeah. or live long enough to see yourself become a villain or something like something like yeah. that but maybe not exactly that but it is that's in all of nolan's mm. films mm-hmm. you know yeah maybe about his that's brother so true yeah matthew <laughs> who broke maybe. out of prison matthew. imagine also i wonder if that now that i'm thinking about that what if that was because if christopher nolan and jonathan mm-hmm. nolan they did um memento together uh, then after that, Jonathan Nolan went on to do like other stuff, Westworld, and Christopher Nolan obviously went on to do all the stuff that he went on to do. But <laughs> do you think maybe that like Matthew was like left out a bit, and then he was That's like, "Why he was you like- guys doing all this crime <laughs> drama? You know what?" <laughs> Maybe I'll do the actual cry, like, and just was like, you know what? I can do stuff too. And then they were just like, oh, come on, man! Why do you have to? Why do you have to tie the oh, bed? Matthew. Sh- yeah, why do you have to tie the bed sheets together? And then he's like, I called myself Oppenheimer. And they were like, what? Who is Oppenheimer? And then he's like, it's this guy that did all of this science stuff. And then Chris Nolan's like, well, hang on, who is that? And then Matthew Nolan's still just like, oh no, I'm in prison. Um, so maybe I don't know. Oh my god! If that, if yeah, I mean. I, I say, do they have any sisters? Well, I don't know. <laughs> maybe <laughs> that's why Christopher Nolan writes doesn't know how to write women. Women, just, yeah, maybe he's just like, oh, it's just Matthew the boys, and yeah. Chris Matthew and John and Chris. <laughs> oh, they're all biblical. Names. Oh my god, oh. no, wait, it's Chris. Chris. No, <laughs> wait, hang on, where'd you get Chris from? Chris. Nolan. Oh, that's the uh, yeah, you know, Christopher. Chris. Oh, Christopher. Yeah, yeah we're on first name terms. Chris, yeah, I email him <laughs> off Reddit. Um, Chris. Maybe Christopher's in, surely Christopher's in the Bible. That sounds Maybe, like a saint or something. Know, yeah. um, all right. Well, well, I guess, yeah, nobody calls him, like, that's the sort of Chris person Nolan. who, it's always Christopher What would it Nolan's. take for you to re-email the guy that plays Sammy Jenkins and just be like, hey, man, um, how's things? I don't, I can do it, but. Well, maybe I could be like, now I'm a comedian. <laughs> just say, just say, because of you. Because like, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's too much pressure for anyone ever. Like, but anything that, else? That yeah. film, when people ask me, like, oh, what are your favorite kinds of films? Like, I'm one of those wankers who says something really vague. And yeah. I, th- I think my favorite kind of film is the kind of film where, like, you have to Google after, like, mm. What did the ending mean? Yeah, yeah. Like or like, I don't think a film is good unless there's like at least fifty Reddit threads dissecting <laughs> what it meant. Yeah, like that to me is yeah. part of the film experience. And yeah. I had so many fights with like guys I date or whatever who just mm-hmm. want to watch a film and not talk about it. <laughs> And I'm like, this is not going to work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like it needs to be something that, that puts the film back on you. Yeah. To be like, well, where do you sit on exactly. this? Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And makes you, yeah, question everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what a good film is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Great. And I have... I've looked you up, oh. even even though we know each other. I wanted to have some credentials, and this is what I've got. Ginia is a writer, presenter, and comedian on a mission to tell stories from underrepresented perspectives. Uh, she is a stand-up. She also won Louis through Amazon Studios Looking for Louis competition. Yeah, I was just telling my housemate, who's also a comedian, before I came out here, like mm-hmm. we literally see each other once a year randomly bumping into each other at Edinburgh. Yeah. Oh, and you then, and I, yeah. I thought you meant you and your housemate. No. And I was like, all right, we get it. Well, You're that busy. about two, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's wild, isn't yeah. it? And actually, I was thinking that over the past few weeks. I was like, oh my, it's like, yeah. it feels like ships in the night. I, I can think of like every year, like one yeah. occasion where we're like, Ah, we should hang out. <laughs> yeah. But it's diff- It's so difficult. so difficult. In Edinburgh especially, you can't finish a thought without being like, ah. Uh. But it never feels like a year has gone by. No, 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 it's no. It's like, ah, oh, you again, two weeks ago. <laughs> because neither of us are aging. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the last time I saw you was when you had just done this documentary thing. Yeah, so basically I, um, I suppose it's not like I ever had a dream of – you know, being a documentary presenter. Mm -hmm. Um, But during COVID, I started writing a lot, writing articles about 
injustices basically because mm-hmm. um, I was working in tech and I was just seeing all this crap go around mm-hmm. and I was like uh, I love that I love that you're doing tech in the day and stand well, up at night yeah. I mean I, like, that's the thing I as, was as, yeah COVID, but especially but, yeah. because if you, that's when you were doing it would be like stand up you'd be like well it's not going to be injustice here yeah. it's going to be more balanced yeah. more diverse and then it would have been like oh no way worse. this is it way was worse crazy yeah. I had never even even though people talk about you know, lack of diversity in tech, I had never even, I know it sounds insane, but I'd never thought of myself as an Asian female. Yeah. Yeah. Before I started. Yeah, you're just stand a person. Up. I'm just yeah. a person. Yeah. 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 And then suddenly I was like, oh yeah, I am Asian. <laughs> when you stand on stage, you're like, I am a woman. That's how people see me. It's so strange, it's isn't so it? Strange. And to see that groups of people yeah. all make the same decision based on the same thing. Yeah. Is, and it's just like, ugh. Yeah. But and what- then you have to preempt that. Yeah. You have to yep. guess what they're going to yep. think of you. And then be like, and then put them at ease. Yeah. It's so <laughs> stupid. But my favorite is when people do the opposite of that, yeah. when they preempt it wrong. Yes. So I watched someone the other day. I got up and they said something like, I know, I know you're all thinking about my mannish jawline. And it was just like, are we though? <laughs> like, oh you know, so, and I, my favorite is when someone gets up <laughs> and they're and they're like really young, but they don't know they're young, so they're like, "Oh God, how embarrassing!" Now I'm 24, yeah. <laughs> I'm old, and everyone then it's everyone's just like, "What?" Yeah. Like it's such an amazing thing to watch people preempt the things yeah. where they're like, "No, actually, I'm I'm not I'm not this." Not like what you think. Yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. I think um, my favorite one was uh, I think he was relatively new, but it was an extremely attractive straight white man, and mm-hmm. his entire set was complaining about how he couldn't get laid. But it was genuine. It was uh, like he wasn't being, you know, yeah. sarcastic. Like I, I, there's no irony. He was genuinely complaining about it, and everyone in the audience were just like. I don't, there's something wrong. Should with we raise our hands? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, yeah. it's so it's difficult, isn't it? When people are like, "Oh, I know." I had a comic say to me, "This was my favorite." She was like, "Beautiful." She was uh, absolutely stunning. I'm not. I'm not negating that. And she said to me when we met, she said, "Yeah, I know. I don't look like a stand-up." And I was like, well, you sound like a narcissist <laughs> to me. I think you're going to be fine. Like, it's just such a strange thing to watch people be like, don't worry. Let me just like, it is yeah. that line that yeah. I know what you're thinking. Yeah. And it's like, not always no. you don't. <laughs> but I get, I get what she means. Sometimes I think that. I wouldn't say yeah. it. I wouldn't say it to you or like other yeah. standups. But I'm sure you get it too when you go to some gigs and mm. the bouncer stops you. And yeah. they're like, where yeah. are you going? Yeah. And I'm like... I'm a stand up. I'm an act. Yeah. It's just stupid. <laughs> They're like, oh. Okay. It's so stupid, though, yeah. because it's like, it's like that thing where you're like, am I going to be offended or am I going to be flattered? Yeah. It's like getting carded where you're like, yeah. oh, how do I choose to yeah. feel today? <laughs> All right. Sure. So you noticed, you noticed yeah. some injustices. Well, yeah. And during COVID and like the BLM stuff happened. Yeah. And I just realized like with stand up, we have a platform mm-hmm. and previously i had like 99 percent of my material was like just about sex being sex positive that was like oh yeah i should have added that i should have added that into the intro you do a night called do you still run the night called sex Um, standing up yeah we used to um we haven't recently yeah um it was a great seller and a great yeah, night. Yeah. I can I never did it, but that's, I've, none of my material <laughs> would ever yeah, be like. Yeah. I would just be like, I'd get up and be like, oh, no. it'd been like <laughs> text. I would, yeah, yeah I would be like, please, someone else talk yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah, no, it was like it was like top three things to do in London yeah. in Time Out, like mm-hmm. three times. Um, Amazing, but yeah. yeah, because of the. So I work in PR as my day job, and I kind of used that to tie it to the news agenda Mm -hmm. so you know for valentine it's kind of obvious i guess but for valentine's day we did like just comedy couples talking about sex the the craziest one was for ramadan we did the milf edition muslims i'd like to yeah okay yeah you can swear yeah (laughs) but yeah we we actually worked with a muslim comedian to and the whole lineup was obviously muslim comedians talking about sex and um we worked with a muslim comedian to come up with a name just make sure that it was yeah kosher which isn't the right yeah yeah yeah, i know i know what you mean yeah (laughs) it's a global world at the moment um but it ended up getting so much publicity that Mm. she had to pull out because she was worried that she would lose uh, commercial deals right because okay. of, of the relationship with sex and um, 
Yeah, it was crazy because we part we um, do it for charity. So we yeah. partnered with the Muslim Women's Network for that, mm-hmm. and they sent us a letter to read out. Yeah. And one of the comedians um, read it out, and there were a couple of girls in the audience that started crying, and they talked to us after, and they just said like the audience were loads of Muslim people great they said it, any just, other audience that would have like not any really, other yeah, audience yeah. but if it was like <laughs> yeah yeah it was just a bunch of like white londoners <laughs> on know. a thursday night you'd be like why are we? this is a little oh, bit no. of performing monkeys I, yeah unless except except for the fact that they were paying then yes, it's like well then true, we took yeah. your money yeah. but yeah yeah i know it. yeah okay all right um, so go on sorry no no but they came up to us after and they just said they've never been in a room with that many muslim people yeah with just Muslim women talking about sex Mm -hmm. on stage. Like, they've just never seen it before. Um, And that actually, that changed my view of stand-up comedy. Because Mm -hmm. before then, I suppose I'd never really seen for myself. Oh, you'd seen the limitations, not the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Or just something that you or I could do tomorrow that actually genuinely impacts somebody's life. Yeah, You know, people say that all the time, Mm -hmm. like oh, you know, your set inspires people or, like, touches people or, like, speaks to them or whatever. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that wasn't me doing Mm. the stand-up, like, but just creating the space Mm. for people to experience that. Like, I'd never seen it for myself. Yeah. Yeah. And after that, I was like, we actually have a platform Mm -hmm. and we can... Do something. Do something. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking there was a there was a guy once in the back row at um at Top Secret. You know the downstairs bit. Mm-hmm. So that's like must be like three hundred yeah. people or something. But he was sat at the back and he was just elderly man and he had those things in your hand that you get mm. when uh, you're having injections. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. And um and it was like he obviously had all kinds of stuff going on, but he was just in tears, laughing mm. so hard at the back. And then I was like, okay, great. Some of mm. these jokes matter yeah <laughs> like, no for sure <laughs> not mine not when i was on stage but <laughs> okay there is some yeah, value to this exactly is useful yeah. especially if every wednesday you're like well this is silly yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. like what am i doing this for yeah and then you just remember something like that and you're like okay even if yep. even if it's one person that goes away thinking i'm not alone mm-hmm. yeah so i l- literally saw this ad on like a facebook group mm-hmm. that was like oh louis through and amazon studios just yeah. posted this competition mm. um the first stage was just um submitting a one-page pitch yeah. and because i work in pr like one page pitch i was like i can do that yeah sent the pitch off um the pitch was just like that you're supposed to pitch an idea that you would be in the midst of it, like in a Louis mm-hmm. through vibe, you yeah. know, like you mm-hmm. would be the center of the experience, but also presenting. Yeah. So I just had this idea of um, an ex of mine was really into chess boxing. I okay. don't know if you know what that. No, is. I don't. <laughs> um, loads of people are like chest boxing. No, it's chess. Boxing. Oh, chess! Yes. I thought you said chest boxing, <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's, that's very specific. I was like, that's kind of manly or not? No. I don't know, but chess boxing. Chess boxing. Yeah, okay. it's like one round of chess, one round of boxing, one mm-hmm. round of chess, one round of boxing. Yeah. No, that's, it isn't. That's the sport. Yeah. No, it isn't. Yeah. Oh, my God. So okay. I, That's really, I don't know what to make of that. I want to yeah. say cool, but that feels like the well, wrong word. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's the right word. Yeah. But okay. um, it's very what is it like? interesting. Yeah, okay. That's, you <laughs> no, have to really train for that. It is super that. cool, yeah. And, and also, you couldn't be good at one or not the other. So there's techniques okay. where they, anyway, we can get okay. into it. Yep. Yep. But I just picked, I had never done it i've Mm. never boxed or played chess really except like yeah you just learn when you're a kid like my one page pitch was just about me in a week yeah because you could only do it in a week Mm -hmm. um going from never having done either to doing a chess boxing match great at the end of the week yeah yep not thinking i'd actually ever have to do it the amount of things that yeah, you're like, well, what apply if I to? Did? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just send it into the other and then never hear anything yeah. back. And then, and like, also sometimes you're almost doing it as a dare with yeah. the universe to be yeah. like, you know what I would do? Let me tell you what yeah, I would do exactly. for a week. And then someone's like, go for it. And yeah. you're like, oh, no. Oh, yeah, no. I have fallen into that trap a few times. And then you're like, yeah. <laughs> even sometimes now if I like I'm mm. like tons of little like pitches out with yeah. production companies and, mm. and commissioners um obviously if any of you are listening I, I would like a commission but yeah <laughs> but sometimes I'll lie in bed thinking oh my god what if they actually commissioned that I'm gonna have to wake up tomorrow and actually do the thing yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> that I said and then you'd um, be like they'd be like we love it and you're like me too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So chess boxing. Yeah. yeah. And then like 
didn't think anything of it. And then like months later, it must have been like two months later, I was in a bath mm-hmm. and I got a call and um did you, did you answer it? I the, didn't answer okay. it, but I got the voice message mm-hmm. and then I just listened to the voice message mm-hmm. and it was from somebody from the competition. Yeah. And I called them back in the bath and they were like, Oh yeah, well, you know, Louie and team loved your idea. Um you've been selected, so they chose ten pitches. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they were like, oh yeah, okay, so um, Louis loved your idea, you have uh, six days mm-hmm. to make it. Oh, you had to make it? Off you go. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, And great. it was six days from like when she called. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was also to make it an even playing field, it was just on your mobile phone. Yeah. Um, they wouldn't judge the editing quality. Great. Yeah, it yeah. would be about the storytelling and, mm-hmm. you know, your vibe and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, your vibe, so well, no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was literally the criteria. They yeah. judge on your vibe. <laughs> um, so I panicked, got out of the bath, and was just like, "Shit, gotta make this happen." Yeah. Um, immediately, like, just emailed like a whole bunch of people trying Not to your make ex. calls. Who no, had this? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. That's the ultimate. Yeah. Like, you know, if you break up with someone and then mm. afterwards they're like, "I'm really into." Yeah whatever th- yeah. you know they say like oh, oh i love God. music now and you're just yeah. like shut up like now you're like oh yeah. look at me i'm the face the of chess, chess box. boxing <laughs> <I'm such> a- <laughs> oh got him God. <laughs> yeah. but funnily enough that ex <laughs> actually did try stand up oh yeah Didn't of continue, course yeah of yeah. course <laughs> of course have you ever yeah yeah i can already i can imagine how the conversation went when you said i do stand up and then he is it. He said there was a pause, and then he, instead of it being about you, went. You know, I always thought I yeah. could do that. <laughs> it's just like, oh, that's literally it's what like. Happened. Well, you didn't. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I wonder how much how much of that. I know a few stand ups actually that have exes that are like were coming to gigs with them and were like, actually, right. And I know for a lot of people, they're watching like open yeah. mics and then being like, I could do better than yeah. that. Well, but I think it's, it's either that or I hate comedy now. Yeah, I never want to watch yeah. any comedy uh, again. Yeah. Open mic is for yeah. the comics, yeah. right? It's humanity yeah. in like one room just like <laughs> burning and it is funny in a meta way <laughs> isn't it because if you're like if it's not you you're yeah. just like and you're also watching the audience be like what is yeah. this and yeah. so it's like if it's really bad then no one can make eye contact with no. the person afterwards it's like it's, that's how it's i shame. judge yeah that's how i judge yeah. how i've done sometimes where i'm like it it was okay, but I'm yep. like, was it okay enough to like get another booking or whatever? Yeah. That's how I judge it. Yeah, they look at me in the eye. eye. And also, it's the level of eyes, right? Because if you've yeah. done if you've done good, then people just speak to you like a normal, normal person. Yes, but if yeah. you've done like amazingly, yeah. their eyes are huge, yeah, yeah. and they're acting like yeah. you're not a person. They're yeah. like, I can't believe yeah. this. Is. And you're just like, <laughs> yeah. what? What yeah. are you doing? Calm yeah. down, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, you're so right. If you did normal, yeah. then it's just like, then oh, you're what a person. Are you up to next week? Yeah. Like, how's it going? Yeah. Yeah, but when it's the no eye contact and just like shuffling away, so I can't look that's at you. When you're yeah. like, I'll just kill myself. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, okay, dear. so you did. A, so you shot the chess boxing. Yeah, yep. yeah, it was super fun. Honestly, I think it was like the best week of ever. Yep. Um, and I was very lucky as well because the because I think what I picked was a community mm, as opposed yep. to a like subculture. a subcult. Exactly. Yep. I think a lot of the other ideas were maybe like more personal, yep. um, which I think for maybe a longer documentary Great. Yep. would be better. Like, you know, yeah, one was about subculture. You can then lean on personality. Yeah, exactly. exactly. The vibe of the character, the vibe of the characters. Exactly. A hundred percent. You yeah. called it personalities. I called it characters. <laughs> uh, yours is better. Yeah, real yours people. is better. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Clearly, you've worked in it for so long. Yeah, You're like cynical like, now. The subject. There's a really good documentary <laughs> called Subject, and it's about oh. how the subjects of documentaries don't necessarily get paid, yes. but their whole life gets changed yes. and stuff. I like. was shocked by that. Yeah, I learned so much. Yeah, so we'll get into that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so very lucky also they were very welcoming mm-hmm. as well. They were yeah. just like, oh, my God, yeah, shoot everything. Come to our house party. Yeah, yeah so, we, we've been expecting yeah. someone to romanticize <laughs> yeah. this as a heroic yeah. thing for a while. Uh, yeah. But also, I, like, <laughs> since that day, mm. if you just throw Louis through his name around, people would be just like, yeah, come watch me take a shit. Like, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
you know, there was a study, a Harvard study on happiness, and they every year they phoned up people that were from Harvard and then people that weren't, and they phoned these men for over the course of 20 years, yeah. and they said every time they phoned a man that wasn't from Harvard, they would just answer the questions, and then at the end they'd say, you know, I just, I can't believe you're so interested in me is oh, the thing. Wow. And then they said none of the ones from Harvard ever said that. Like, there was never a, like, no. why are you interested in me? It was like, yeah, you probably want to know what I'm <laughs> up to. <laughs> you yeah. were at the chess boxing house parties. Oh, yeah. So so then it was also about their person, not yeah. just, like, the chess boxing stuff. Also, luckily, there was a clip of me getting, like, punched in the head. Oh, great. So all the factors lined <laughs> oh, up. Do you to still be... have that? We could put that yeah. online. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it was a two-minute video, and that one mm-hmm. won. Yeah. So, so, yeah, but it was crazy because, you know, at that time, I didn't even know what development meant. Yeah. I didn't even yeah. know what a treatment was. Like, mm-hmm. I, I remember actually the original uh, website, it said six month exclusive development period. Mm. And then in the end, they when I won it, they were like, it's a three month exclusive development period. And mm. I was like, oh, I thought it was six months. Yeah. Thinking that was better. Yeah. And they were like, well, no, you wouldn't want six months because what it means is you can only talk to us. You probably want to yeah. talk to other people. Yeah, not just exactly. us. But in my head, I was yeah, like, you don't six know. months yeah. is better than yeah. three months. You're like, are you guys yeah. breaking up with me? Yeah, early? yeah, of Sorry, course. Really yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's but fine. it's just crazy how little you would know yeah. about any of these things. Like, but how then would it's also, you? it's also that thing as 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 well of of thinking that not knowing a certain term is going to be what like makes you unqualified to do the yes, thing right I yeah. remember when I first got when I first got taken on by BAFTA yeah. they had a zoom call and it was welcoming yeah. people and everyone was meeting and they'd do these little breakout rooms so it'd be you and six other people in BAFTA and the first one we got into the first thing someone said I was so annoyed because obviously I am not from the country I'm not whatever mm-hmm. and I was like yes like you've broken in some kind of door at first mm. and zoom call opens and this other woman in the zoom just goes so who went to NFTS and when? What? Like the National Film yeah, and yeah, Television yeah. School. I know you know oh, that. Um, and, and it was just so like, and I was just like, what? Yeah. And then someone else went, oh, I was in 2010. And she was like, oh, was that when the building works happened? And I was like, what are you doing? Like, it was such a like, I've just fought <laughs> oh my, my way God. in here. And now you're still making yeah. me be an outsider. Yeah. And it is just that thing of being like, oh, actually, like, I don't know for the t- the term for this, but I know what works and what doesn't yeah, work, right? Yeah, um, I think there probably will be more and more of that because what I'm noticing is that there is so much talk of wanting to change stuff. Yeah. So that's probably why they even had a scheme like the one I was just talking mm-hmm. about as yeah. a way of like, th- because that was open to anyone in the entire country. There's no mm-hmm. barriers to entry. You had yeah. no need for any experience and mm-hmm. you could immediately get access to Louis through yeah. and Amazon yeah. Studios. Yeah. You know, there's none of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then book. Tell mm-hmm. me about a book. So again, I was thinking Gone Girl, mm-hmm. even though it's quite basic. Um, Hang on. Why is it, why is it basic? <laughs> well, because it's like, Almost the opposite of what I just said in terms of, like, it is the equivalent of, like, the Hollywood thriller in a book. Yes. Yeah. Although you're on her side, you're on the main character's side for the first the half, first aren't half, you? Yeah. And then it's like, Twist. I got you, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, it's similar. Yes. Yeah. Um, I guess by which I mean it's not considered, like, a classical piece of literature. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then even like... Trashy, I'm, let's just say it. People think it's trashy. <laughs> but, then what, but then people think it's trashy. Why? I mean, David, no, I don't know David Fincher do, made a film out of it. Like, they, so, yeah, you know, like it's not yeah. like, it's not, no. I don't want to say any book after this because otherwise I'm being like, it's not this. <laughs> um, no, I don't think it is. But it's so good because, again, it changed my view mm. on how to like write or... Yeah make a piece of work that is like so the first half yeah you're on her side but when you're on her side you're on her side because she is so um typically um playing on the stereotypes of what being a young woman today is yeah. like mm-hmm. and she plays on all our insecurities yeah. about like I think I don't know if she invented the term but there's a th- whole thing in there about it's like her diary entries right yeah and she's talking about trying to be a cool girl. Oh, yeah. yeah. And like every girl. I think she started that. Yeah. It was like, a, like that became the term after from that. Gone and then girl, it went right. from like cool girl to like pick me girl yes. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so she, yeah, she literally put it into words what every girl has thought before. Like, yeah. I'm trying to be this. I'm trying yeah. to be this girl. And 
she just summarizes all of that so well. Yeah. And then and this weird thing about the about this thing of like I've played a role that yeah. isn't me yeah. for a certain amount of time, yes. and now I'm angry at yeah. the person who didn't necessarily ask me to yeah. act that way, but I did act in that yes. way, and now I've lost all of this yeah. time yeah. by not being myself. Yeah. It's just like yeah. what? Yeah. Like it's such a huge pantomime yes. of like backflips of just like I'm not this person but I was pretending yeah. to be this person but now I yeah. now I did and now it's not even what Real, like it's exactly. like who was I doing that for yeah. no one and no, it's like yeah. yeah exactly yeah so that's all exactly what you said and mm. also real and then when the twist comes mm. it was all like her setting it up but was it her was it her is it her I haven't read the book I've watched the film mm. is it her setting it up the whole for time the police to find but, or is it her setting it up once she has been scorned, um, <laughs> Cause, I think because she... one I'm fine with. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I mean. That's not what I meant. I mean, like, um, was it like at first she was like, "This is how my life's going to be," and when it was like, it actually... started off like, yeah. yeah. I think in the beginning she thought her life was going to be perfect and mm. blah blah blah, but then she specifically wrote those diary entries so mm. that the police would think that he was the asshole. Yeah, yeah. Um, all along, but it was. Again, mm. it's a kind of similarly, these plots are not new. They're not new yeah. plots. Mm -hmm. it, there's a twist. And yeah. then the woman is actually the bad guy. Yeah. We've seen it a million times before. But it was also like just structurally mm. how it was done. Yeah. It's like, I guess because we're interested in this sort of thing technically as well, mm -hmm. that I would stop to think about why it made such an impact. And yeah. then you dissect it like, mm -hmm. okay, so technically she did it by... Uh, you know, it's diary entries. Yeah. And it's, you know, a third of the book. Yeah. Because we're nerds. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, like, this is how she introduces the twist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how she then, like, regains her power. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Because she leads you to believe she's lost all her power. Mm -hmm. And then it's, like, a very rare way of, like, a woman actually having been in power all along yeah. so it feels extra empowering yeah because she's so self-aware mm. of the power dynamics between her and her husband that yeah. she's managed to create this scenario yeah. where she has no power mm. and yet she is in charge all along yeah and then she drops a bombshell and then this happens and this happens. and then yeah so it's like it's not just Oh, halfway through the book, there's a twist. Yeah, it's like yeah. so many things that but she's planted. It, it starts but... to twist you. Yeah. First yeah. of all, it's that every choice was like yeah. leading towards it's choices. Something. Yeah. Yeah. But then it's also that thing of in both of those, you're aligned with that central character, mm -hmm. and then when when you when you get the rug ripped out yes. from underneath you, you're still just like, well, I'd understood where they were going. Yeah. And and so there is a part of you that's like. Well, hang on, that made sense to me. Yeah. So it's not like yeah. this kind of like polarizing thing of like this person's this and she's yes, manipulative exactly. and she's that. You're like, well, she's also been she's manipulated. Also You're yeah. like, it's such a weird thing yeah. to be like, okay, well, but then there's this cultural thing going on. Mm -hmm. So actually like, mm -hmm. and then it gets to a point. I think both of them get to a point, maybe in the third act, I mean, for the film, mm -hmm. not the, um, where you just go, I'm not sure how I want this to end. Yes. Right? Yes, exactly. And, and that kind of thing was like where yeah. he starts to play her back, where mm -hmm. he starts to be yes. like, come back, come home. Yeah. Then you just go, then you get that other thing happening of like, oh, well, this, you get that weird dynamic of like, mm -hmm. well, actually, now that it's, now that it's being offered Even up, we see all field. this person yeah. wanted was love and yeah. now it's being dangled and you just go, ah, there's no good way for this to end. Exactly. Like, it's like people fighting fire yeah. with fire and you just go... Yep, this is yeah. where we are now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. It's where we are now and it's a really good like assessment of like things not being black yep. and white in today's yep. society, yep. but just yep. like obviously like an extreme version of that yeah. because it's yep. fiction. Yeah. Um but again, that ending it leaves the question. I think the last line of the book, I can't remember the exact words, mm. but it just dangles in front of you like the impact that it left on me is that they're bound together. Yeah, because they've transcended good or bad, right? Because they're both just so bound in like not knowing what's good, right and wrong anymore. Yeah, they're, like, and all stuck together. Yeah, yeah. Or I would also say that they've become so toxic that they yeah. that it's just like can't. who can yeah. who's gonna take this now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You people who write female leads, I guess previously were trying to be really careful that they mm. presented this character that was yeah. likable yeah. and that was this and that was that, like. Fuck that. Yeah. Like, and also it is the whole thing is that 
it's her attempts to be likable mm. that actually end up sending her so far the other way, mm. right? Mm-hmm. That you just go, yeah. oh, well, of course you're yeah. this angry if you yeah. had held back all of this stuff for mm-hmm. so long. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, again, that feeling of like, who was a bad guy here? Yeah. Final page of the book when a- I- Amy asks, Amy asks why Nick is being so nice to her. He coolly responds, because I feel sorry for you. Because every morning you have to wake up and be you. Is that it? Is that the final end? Uh, Do you com- need like a smooth ending? I don't know. I don't um, know. I'll just kind no. of fade it out. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. This podcast is brought to you by Islington Radio and by ilo.co.uk. ILO is the UK's first for women, by women, sexual health and well-being retailer. That's iloh.co.uk. Please leave us a review. I know everyone says stuff like that, but it does really make a difference.